Hi everyone, Jessica Jankowski again. I'm an occupational therapist here to share some information about OT. So for today, I thought we'd go a little bit deeper into the eight areas of occupation. The first area is activities of daily living. So ADLs involve all the things you do to take care of yourself, whether it's bathing, dressing, going to the bathroom, brushing your teeth and hair, all those things you do every day to help get yourself ready for participating in other activities. The next area is instrumental activities of daily living, IADLs. So these are a little bit more complicated and complex. They're all the tasks that you do to help you live your independent life and kind of get you more prepared for your daily life. So this involves caring for others, caring for pets. It can also involve driving or community mobility, and it can even involve completing your finances. The third area of occupation is sleep and rest. So not only is this actually getting a night's sleep and participating in sleep, but it's how you prepare for sleep, so the routine around going to bed. Also, rest is any activity that gives you some relaxation and relieves tension. The next area is education. So not only is this formal education like going to school or enrolling in college, it's also informal education like going online or reading a book and just becoming more knowledgeable about a topic you're interested in. Work is the next area of occupation. So this is labor exertion. So it's not only when you have your job and how you perform your job, it's when you're seeking employment, preparing for retirement, or even when you're volunteering. This all falls under the area of work. Leisure is a non-obligatory commitment and activity that actually is motivating intrinsically to you. So this involves exploring your leisure pursuits like do you like chess or do you like swimming, those kind of activities. And then once you find something you do like, participating in those events to your satisfaction. The next area is social participation. So this area of occupation is a little bit more complex because it can involve other areas of occupation, but with the goal of participating in your community, your family, or interacting with peers or friends. So how you use those other occupations to interact with others. The last area is play. Now this is an area that seems really specific to children, but adults can play too because play is defined as a spontaneous or organized activity that provides you with enjoyment or amusement. So really anything that you do that makes you happy. These eight areas come together not only to make occupational therapy make more sense, but also shows you that there are many different types of occupational therapists that can work to help people improve all of these eight areas. Thank you.